Hey everybody, welcome back. I just wanted to go over the tools segment with everyone and show everybody uh, the basic tools you're going to need to function as a professional car electronics installation tech. Uh, these are things I've used for a long time and uh, I've, I'm going on, I think, in 20 years here pretty soon. So uh, I know for those of you that may follow like Soundman or something like that on Amplified, I believe he's He's been doing it for quite a bit of time and a lot of us use the same resources and we all like to uh, use different tools. So anyways, I'm going to go over this really quick. Um, basic function of a multimeter. This guy's dead, haven't had it in a while. Uh, for those of you that do security stuff, bit rider. Um, I still have it just because I've been doing this for so long. It's been replaced by the XK3 now where you can do Bluetooth programming right off your iPad. Um, as far as audio stuff, I got a 1K Hertz tone generator. Now, for those of you that have followed car audio for a long period of time, uh, you'll know that there's uh, Richard Clark and Dave Navone. These guys are pioneers of audio engineering and electrical engineering, and they invented a lot of different things. Uh, Pack Audio also uses their uh, tone generator. And uh, if you can see at one point here, I used to have voltages and stuff written out, and I got that. Um, for my multimeter oscilloscope here. So this is my go-to tool. Um, obviously I have other things in your headlights. Uh, safety glasses are really important. If you're working underneath the vehicle, you definitely want to have shit not falling in your eyeballs when you're working. So um, charger for my oscilloscope. <laughs> now, I don't know if you guys noticed, it's out of my box. I took a seminar with uh, Mark Eldridge. Now, for those of you who don't know who Mark Eldridge is, he was a sound quality champion for a very long time. He was very well known for a forerunner that he did. But uh, his course gave me a lot of the tools to make me understand what audio is and was before I attempted taking the master examination because he wrote that portion at the time of the exam. This disc is what I use for tuning. It's a high bit rate quality a disc that was part of the competition at the time that everyone used the same disc for tuning and testing and, and judging. So uh, this is still a great CD. You should always have a disc that you're familiar with the music because when you're replicating it in someone's vehicle you want it to sound exactly like the environment it was recorded in. So key tool there guys. Um, you'll notice I have a preamp outboard audio setup that I will also show in maybe another video with the condenser microphone. This allows me to pick up all the audio correctly and flatten everything out and make sure my audio systems are tuned uh, at a good starting point. That is not where you want to just tune a system and be done. So generally at the end of the day any, any sound quality champion or true person who believes in what they build they're going to use an RTA as a starting point, but the ears are going to be your finishing point. And if you have any clients that get into high end audio, uh, you're going to want to tune it to the music that they're familiar with and have them give you the tweak adjustments. But you have to understand bands and stuff at that point. So obviously, I have more stands for microphones. I have audio controls, uh, SA4100, which works fantastic with their, uh, their uh, app. So uh, these are just your basic drawers, obviously they have different kinds of decibel meters and stuff. Uh, there's some classic ways of measuring sound uh, that you, you do without having an RTA. Um, this is my go-to pouch. So for those of you that follow me or know about what I do, um, I also do home insulation as well. So I'm familiar with, with terminating actual fiber optic and category. And, and doing higher end things um, already that hopefully are making their way into vehicles soon because RCAs are susceptible to picking up noise and stuff like that. But you want a good pair of strippers. If you notice, these get down to a pretty small gauge, and this is going to become important because all the new vehicles, especially like Lexus and all them, they're using really tiny gauge wire now that you're going to have to tap into for your security stuff. And uh, you know, you're all the way down to 26 gauge or so. Uh, very important to have bits. As you can see, I got a lot of standard bits. Uh, this is going to give you stuff for 
mainly European vehicles use a lot of torques and stuff. And uh, you're going to need T20s, T25s, um, obviously a good set of crimpers. Um, you'll see I have this crazy tool here. Now, a lot of guys go cheap on this tool. I don't recommend it. Um, I have another one. Yeah, this is the one that most guys get. Now, if you notice, it's more streamlined looking. And uh, this piece kind of flops around and it gives you an angle. But if you notice, I'll put something in here. It's not really a 90, okay? The other thing is, is this pulls in and out. So if a bit doesn't have a notch in it, it's gonna pull in and out really easy. Now the problem, why I don't recommend this, this is a master tip. Uh, I was working on a Ferrari and the drill obviously spins very quickly. Now you can see this is 90, but this doesn't pull out. This one locked up the gears, spun around through the bit and broke the window in the guy's vehicle with him standing there and both of our jobs hit the ground. So I don't recommend that. Uh, if you want to get this, this is entirely on you. So um, definitely a good starter tool, but when you become a true professional, you want the real deal tool. Also, this has an adjustable turning latching ability here. These are probably about 90 bucks. Good tools are going to cost you money. However, you don't always need to be buying snap-on. Again, don't, don't buy snap-on tools just because you think you're a badass and you're going to have the greatest tools. If you don't know how to use them, the tools that are useless to you. So, um, solder sucker drills, you're gonna need pick tools, okay? Any of the little panels and stuff inside of a car, these are critical tools for you to pull things out. Uh, I don't recommend using them for a lot of things because you can scratch the shit out of someone's dash and it's not recommended. This abortion hook tool that a lot of people love uh, a lot of it is just used to push cans and stuff, uh, and, and and it's basically a really expensive can tool, and it really sits in my box a lot nowadays, because I usually use my right angle pick tool uh, to do the same job. And uh, again, I'll, I'll show more of that in other videos. Uh, different cutting stuff, drill bits, and fabricating any acrylic, you want the right acrylic drill bit. You can't just use a normal drill bit. Obviously, there's files. For those of you that are interested in doing custom dash work, uh, you're going to want files. I also have an air file. I have a Dremel tool. Um, these are all things you're going to need as you begin uh, customizing and fabricating stuff. So the key tools these days are your panel tools, and they're usually vinyl tools. Uh, different companies have given these to me through different events and master's meetings and uh, you'll see there's different very variances here of uh, uh, tools. You know, I have obviously this set, a, a client just gave me these, so he basically thought he was going to do it himself. I don't know what you're supposed to do with this, maybe fillet some crab or something, I'm not really sure. A lot of these never really made a whole lot of sense to me. Honestly, I use, uh, not that, but these probably the most uh, because of the angles and stuff they have. Um, you start getting into higher via higher vehicles and luxury vehicles and stuff. You can use, um, you know, fancier tools. I got this great little set here from uh, Bojo. Uh, obviously, they're not a sponsor to the channel or anything. You can see, you know, they give you some more hook tools for when you go fishing, and uh, this is when you want to clean the shit out from underneath your nails, I guess. Um, I have no idea what the hell that would be used for, really. Um, perhaps I'll have to do some homework and find out. Uh, maybe this is more of an advanced nail cleaner. I'm not really sure what the hell you would do with that. But anyways, um... It was very nice of them to give me these tools and I go through them and use them depending on the projects. Um, 
But the key thing with those is you want a good set that doesn't break. So as you can see, these are pretty strong. I'm not that weak. You don't want your tools to break and you don't want them to scratch the shit out of someone's dash. That's why these are a critical tool. So you're gonna want a good set. I don't recommend Harbor Freight. It's probably closer to, you know, what this other brand is that this guy got. I mean, as you can see, these are pretty thin. So they're flexible, but when you need to put pressure on something to pry it out or move a dash bezel loose so you can put in a stereo, the thin junk is not the greatest thing to use. Um, Crutchfield sold those to those guys, so sorry Crutchfield. Um, obviously because I own vehicles I have some mechanical stuff in here. Um, this is a battery terminal cleaner. Always inspect your customer's battery connection when you're doing amplifiers. And the reason why you want to do that is because if you have any corrosion it's going to corrode your terminals also. Keep your terminals clean. Always have a terminal cleaner of some kind. Okay, and then uh, a lot of us guys have junk drawers. This would be for uh, fabricating boxes. Anything you need to hold together while you're gluing it, etc. These are critical uh, things. These are my very nice fabric scissors for cutting fabrics and vinyls when I'm wrapping stuff. So. Um, definitely want a good pair of scissors okay uh, obviously I have different tools for uh, taking out various bolts seat belts uh, when you're doing overhead monitors and you got to run them down the pillars you're gonna want those you're gonna want some serious cutters cut your four gauge out gauge as long as you got strong hands you're good there um, these things are kind of a waste I've had them for years and I don't really cut uh, zip ties with this. However, you want something that cuts a zip tie close so it's not cutting the shit out of you. And if I have one, I'll show you. You, you want it to get close. So if you're here, you can cut close with this. If you're cutting far away and you get an angle or something, this is really sharp if you have to stick your hand back in the dash. And no, it's not really a great security option uh, if you're trying to sell that to your customer that way. Um, <clears throat> pliers, you'll see I have crazy things like this. If you gotta get into a dash and pull something, these are good to reach in and grab stuff. Uh, again, this is another variant of a vice grip to get in on another different kind of a type of a weird situation. So um, basically with vehicles you have to be prepared to fight any crazy angle. In this job you're going to have so many different body positions. I highly recommend doing yoga. Um, obviously my fat self doesn't do a whole lot of yoga. But I try to stretch and stuff before I do jobs because you're going to be in a car and it's a cramped situation. Uh, brake set obviously has nothing to do with stuff. Uh, dead blow hammer is fantastic. In case you guys don't know what that is, you can hear it has like sand in it. So it, it helps not having to put so much power into hammering a panel down, for example. So if you want to make sure all your panel clips are popped in really good one of these guys. So this obviously has had a really good uh, life. Um, I don't say you need to buy these. Normal wrenches are fine if you need to work on batteries. Uh, for those of you that work on GMs, this is going to be your friend here. These are a ratcheting style. Uh, the more expensive ones are going to give you a closer ratchet, not a, not a far click. So you don't have to turn it as much for, for multiple uh, quick to turn it. It's just a tightening thing. You'll know the difference in quality of your tools as you progress and purchase good tools. So, um, again, getting back into uh, customizing. Uh, good Dremel is good to have. Again, I do home stuff, so I also have um, one for like sheetrock. Have an electric stapler. Um, this is a very expensive upholstery pneumatic stapler. I know air is going out, but if you look at the tip, it's very precise and it's an excellent gun on top of uh, 
being able to do different things, different kinds of staples, different depths for staples depending on the materials you use. Uh, all of you guys are going to want this. I'm going to go ahead and share that and hopefully everyone getting that. Um, this kit allows you to pull out the factory stereos in uh, German vehicles, for example, Volkswagen, uh, Mercedes, BMW likes to do crazy shit and that's why there's these little um, uh, hex tools. Generally you gotta pull out their volume knobs and find a little unlock and that's what this guy does here. Uh, Ford has these. Back in the older vehicles they had two clips on each side and you have to push those in and unlock the stereo. And without this kit, you're not getting that job done. Um, there's other hokey ways to do stuff, but that is obviously not professional. And that's something I'm not teaching. Um, no, this isn't a bag of weed. It's uh, bull nose staples. Again, doing uh, different types of upholstery, uh, depending on how much customizing you're offering your customers. So, this is my go to toolbox for. Glues, template tapes, uh, tape for uh, electrical connections. Here, uh, we move on down to the bottom drawer, where I have a lot of fabrication stuff, sandpaper, um, heat gun stuff like that. <clears throat> uh, random brushes for fiberglass. So fabrication tools I'll get into uh, another time obviously. So hot glue and stuff like that, drills. Um, let's uh let's step into the most important tool you're gonna ever use. Alright guys, so obviously these are the important tools. Um, in case anyone's wondering. This is another type of panel tool that uh, helps you actually get in the door jam, for example, and lets you lift. So, uh, very good tool, had it for many years. You're probably going to leave tools in customers' cars and they are not going to give them back to you. So, um, as you can see, I have specific leads I like to use. Uh, this one actually grabs the wire and you can see how it punches into the wire as it grabs it instead of having to stab a wire and stab yourself and uh, all those other wonderful things so um, this is going to be I'm not saying you have to buy this in particular but an oscilloscope multimeter is going to be your friend um, this particular fitting allows you to do RCAs. Um, so here's your different settings. I'll let everybody see that. That way you have AC, DC voltage. You can actually do decibel uh, for like MOSFET transistors. This is for reading uh, uh, ohms or impedance on speakers. You're looking at um, continuity, which is a common one for testing if you have a broken wire for example a uh, diode will tell you whether you have a forward or reverse or open uh, biased diode <clears throat> uh, capacitance which is measured in microfarads uh, again further down the video line here I'm gonna go over uh, how many farads equal uh, or a million farads for example equal one farad so uh, stuff like that that makes a difference uh, you have peaks, it'll show you for different types of waveforms, um, temperature, if you have a temperature probe, um, amperage is one that you can use with the Hall Effect clamp that I showed you, it's that green clamp, um, generally on this you use the 1 volt equals 1 amp, and it'll tell you AC or DC, and you'll see what your amperage is on the draw of that. So. Um, <clears throat> obviously, if you're doing uh, frequency, you can tap in for uh, 
to your signal off an amplifier. Uh, we showed you this tool here, which I keep a barrel connector on. So now if you see when this is turned on, okay, you can see what frequency it's able to give you on the screen here. So let's see, we have Ambridge and I'm retarded because this is on the B signal not the A input. So pay attention to your inputs. Obviously this is a dual channel and I have this plugged into B and that's why we're not seeing anything. So uh, my apologies for my stupidity. So anyways, now you can see what a shitty square wave looks like. Um, that's showing distortion whenever you see that. So if you take it down, you can see that your amperage is changing, okay? So, this is obviously a square wave frequency. The higher you go, the tighter it gets, and uh, the meter is adjustable, so. You can see we're at 12,000 hertz. And going down, you can see 41. Um, I don't know what the hell I wrote there, but anyways. Um, so, this particular meter shows you your last setting. So, if you were to go to uh, volts DC to choose your leads, and then you go here and go up to cycles. Now you can see on the screen here what the voltage preamp is. And you can see that turning it up gives you what your voltage is. Okay. So that's just an example of how to use an oscilloscope meter and what it's useful for. Um, the other thing is if you want to do uh, trending, which basically shows you uh, any changes in the circuitry here, you'll see it in an actual graph and you can, you can do minimum, maximum, average, and you can just turn it off too. So if you have any spikes or voltage changes or anything you're trying to trace, uh, this is the toy to use. So that's why I wanted to show everybody this. Uh, you don't have to get on this level until much later on in your career. Uh, if you want anyone to take you serious in the audio game uh, and you want to set up a system to where your gains are done correctly and you don't want distortion in your signal path, this is going to be one of the tools you're going to want. So, I hope everybody enjoyed this little segment here. I just wanted to show some of the main tools that I use and that help me get the job done efficiently. Um, there's a lot of things. Let me go ahead and move this camera here. There's a lot of things that are going to be involved with getting installations done. Uh, a lot of what you're going to need to learn is uh, how different vehicles are put together. And uh, they're not always fun. Uh, German vehicles or European vehicles tend to be put together uh, well and they come apart very complex. You need different tools for all the different panel types. Uh, eventually you get into understanding plastics and how they form and bend and which ones are garbage and which ones rot and all that other fun stuff. Um, when you start getting into audio, this is my composition book. Uh, when Todd Ramsey was in charge at the time, he used to send out stuff and this is one of the MECP things he did on voltage drop, which is important to know. Uh, these diagrams are very helpful in understanding the different areas within the circuit and what the voltage drop readings were. Uh, this is a particular subwoofer that I think I own that I actually designed the enclosure on. So you want to take a look at stuff. Um, this is one of the IASCA discs. It gives you all the different frequencies. Uh, a lot of this is helpful for pinpointing uh, tones and stuff that you're just not picking up. Again, we'll get into 
uh, audio much later on, but you can see there's different formulas and stuff for calculating which subwoofer is actually the best subwoofer and how to make your system sound any particular way. And uh, I've had this composition book for years. So, that's going back in the drawer of secrets. Thanks again for joining me. I hope I helped you guys out and you guys can figure out what tools you're going to buy and what you're going to need before you start your installations. Uh, always have a plan. Don't just tell people, yeah, you can install it. Uh, some of the other things I'll probably go over for some of the basics is going to be like wire gauge and stuff like that. Um, there's also something called CCA wire, which is a type of aluminum crap ass copper wire it's all junk but anyways uh, thanks for tuning in please subscribe share the video to anyone who has interest in car electronics um, I'm eventually going to get into more detailed stuff that everybody likes to see that's really cool and me suffering uh, working on cars so again I've been doing this for a long time it is fun but it's also complex and it's not something you want to show up to and uh, act like a goofball or scratch someone's car or